the Boston Celtics whooped the Dallas Mavericks last night. Dismantled. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Raptors NBA podcast. We are your host, Alex Drobin and Andy Redding. We had to come back to talk about this finals preview and talk about what's going to happen. We had to talk about game one. The Boston Celtics dominated the Dallas Mavericks in game one. Um, I was a bit surprised. Andy, what are your first thoughts? Uh, it was a good old-fashioned ass-whooping. It was the best of the best against a team that didn't look like the, they belonged. Uh, I, I'll i go to my first takeaway from it. It's the Chris Stapps factor. Uh, he just puts Boston on a whole nother level. He just... Having a third option like him who can score and defend, it's... I don't know if Dallas has an answer. Do you think they do? So here's the thing. To me, it seems pretty strange that Porzingis played such a huge role on that team because to me, not it wasn't just an offensive thing that he did for the Celtics. It was such high-level defense from him. He had like six or seven plays where he either altered shots or blocked shots. But then you think about who Dallas just beat. They beat the Defensive Player of the Year and Rudy Gobert. Um, Nas Reed and Cat, who are all long, who the, all of them should be able to disrupt alley oop plays like Porzingis was last night, but they never did. So I think it wasn't just his 20 points in 20 minutes, which is, by the way, absurd for a guy that's coming back. It was the fact that he was altering all these shots. And if he plays like this, man, I don't know if I don't know if Dallas goes past Game Five if he plays like that. I'm kind of with you. I. Uh... A team having Chris Stapps as their third option is phenomenal. That makes you a title favorite. I think Insane. the problem when he was in Dallas is he was the second option. And I, you're not going to be, your ceiling's not going to be that high when he's your second option. But as a third option, you're that's you're so deep. And then you have a bunch of other guys who can defend around you. It's lights out, game over. So a lot of people are talking about Porzingis, obviously, offensive side, defensive side. But honestly, the one thing that I saw right off the bat, and I was talking about this before the series started, was the absolute ridiculous guard defensive matchups that Boston was going to be able to throw at Dallas. So like when Drew Holiday came on to Luka, people are talking about Jalen Brown guarding Luka, Tatum guarding Luka. You know, Drew Holiday came on Luka and he scored three points for the rest of the second half. Luka had 27 and then he only dropped three points on um, on Drew Holiday. I think he's like one of the only defenders who is strong enough to be to stay in front of Luca. As funny as that sounds. And Luca like couldn't really get around him. And then you have Derek White, you have people changing shots. And then the stat of the night for me was that when Al Horford was on Luca as a primary defender, Luca went one for eight, zero for four from the three point line, and only dropped two points as well. So it was weird. Drew Holiday was guarding him really well. And then when Al Horford got switched onto him with somebody shading, Luka couldn't score. So That's I don't strong. know, man. Like, it's a really strange matchup for Dallas because they've never faced such an aggressive backcourt defensive matchup like Derek White and um, Drew Holiday. And then obviously Jalen Brown and Jason Tim can also defend. I don't know. This is, this is going to be a tough series for Luka. Boston's got 10 guys who can defend. They're they're so deep. They got just scrappy. They got Pritchard can defend. They got dudes that can that can ball. This team is. I do you see a way for Dallas to win more than one game this series? I do. So hold on. First, I'm, I'm just looking up. I'm looking up how many years Al Horford's been in the league because I think to me that was like the wildest stat because. The way that he played defense on Luka when he got switched onto him, it was so strange because, like, his side to side movement was incredible. So, May 2022, is he 15th year in the league? Hold on. How many years? 17 years. So, a 17 year veteran was playing incredible defense on Luka Doncic, which is like, you know, that's absurd. Um, big, too, not just like some guy who's quick twitch. This guy, this is a big. He's a big. A and big dude. Really good lateral movement. I don't know. Um, to me, the only way that Luca and the Mavericks can can win this series is if Kyrie helps out a little bit more. And you know, some of their they need to figure out how to get that lob threat back because that they were killing every team with that lob beforehand, and now it just seems like they can't get there. 
a lot of it had to do with Porzingis. A lot of it had to do with Al Horford. But it seems like Boston shouldn't be big enough for this team with Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. They shouldn't be this. They shouldn't be defending the lob threat so well. I don't know what's happening. Like, what How do you did, think? Yeah, I don't. I don't quite understand. It's you would think Minnesota last series would give them more problems defending it, and now Boston's doing better at it. I, I don't understand. You'd think Gobert and Towns would be way better at it last series, but I don't know. I'm I'm perplexed. I, the other thing that they're doing to Luca is they're guarding him like the entire way up the floor. Like Drew Holiday, Derek White, they're literally bumping him. Like he was being guarded like that by Jaden uh, McDaniels, Jalen McDaniels, Jaden McDaniels. Last I mix him up. Series, um, last series from Minnesota, but it seemed like it didn't bother Luca. These guys seem like they're bothering Luca a little bit. They're bumping him and stuff. And then, um, you know, like you could tell in the huddles too. Just listening to the Bill Simmons podcast, and this is honestly, I've noticed, I noticed this too when they were in the huddles it seemed like Drew Holiday was the most active and the most vocal. So he was like, I got him. That's it. Like, I'm just going to try to hold out. He's never won a championship. Porzingis has never won a championship. Like, obviously, the the top two players on that team never won a championship. Everyone's hungry on the Celtics team. And I feel like a lot of people just kind of counted them out. Would you agree? Counted out the Celtics? Like, kind of. I know. The I, best I team in the regular season by a mile? No. I just no think the main, like, the mainstream media, I think, was – was kind of just saying, you know, Kyrie and Luca might be the best two players in the series and they might just take over. But I think people just didn't think that um, the Celtics as a collective unit were going to be this good. Like Kyrie shot for six, uh, shot six for 19 for 12 points in game Tied one. For his worst shooting performance in NBA finals in his career. Just awful. Yeah. Awful. By the way, side note, I'm so tired of seeing every single clip on my Instagram and on my TikTok, these slow motion moves from Kyrie from the They're entire slow season. motion. It's always, <laughs> and it's always this beautiful music and Kyrie's always like, you know, just like doing something crazy. Yeah, it's really nice. He does it a couple times a game, but like, you know, I'm so tired of seeing them. I'm like, okay, he's good. He's one of the best ball handlers in the league. Anyways, he can't shoot six for 19 for 12 points. I don't think that'll happen again, but he needs this, to be a much bigger help. I don't know. This could be a legacy defining series for Kyrie. Like he has a chance to sure he's the second field of the Luca, but if he can put them over the edge and help him win, you can kind of drop the narrative of him being a punk when he was with the Celtics. You can show that he's come full circle, but he's, I don't know. Do you know he's lost 11 straight games to Boston? That was, that, Just, I was going to tell you that stat. That's such an insane absurd. stat. To the team that he ran a muck on when he was on him. You know, I thought that he was going to get booed significantly more than he did because, like, the whole thing where he, like, stomped on the Celtics logo and stuff. Like, imagine if somebody came into Toronto and did that. Oh, public enemy number one. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. I feel like the Celtics crowd came up, came up, um, you know, came out pretty aggressively against him, but I thought it was going to be a little bit worse. I don't know. Maybe he just has the heebie-jeebies when he comes into that when he comes into the garden there. Like who knows who knows what the deal is. But he was just not playing well, you know. Um, he can't do that. I think the other thing is, again, this guard play defensively is just on top of him. Like Derek White, Drew Holiday, those guys get switched. Jalen Brown gets switched on him. Jalen Brown had that block on him when he went inside, and it was just like, there's no way you're getting that shot this this shot up on me. So I think from an overall standpoint, like the defense on the perimeter is by far the best that the Dallas Mavericks have seen this season. So like, I don't know. I don't know if Luca can solve this, man. Let's look at it just on paper. He shouldn't be able to solve it because it's an egregious mismatch. It's like the best team in the NBA versus a... Uh, the- the Mavericks were not even a sure contender all year. They were just like a middle of the pack Western Conference team. It's kind of what it is, is on paper is playing out in front of us. Let's rank the best players in this series one to ten. Okay, one through ten. Okay. Well, we, let's idea. get to like eight or nine, whatever. Number no, one. No, let's go to, ten. Number one has to be Luca, right? Yes. Number two has to be Jason Tatum. Yes. Number three. From a numbers perspective, it has to be Jalen Brown from a numbers perspective. Are we talking 
this playoffs, the season, this season, this season, the last few seasons, Jalen Brown's got had better numbers than Kyrie. So I would put him third, probably. Sure, but Kyrie's next, yeah. Kyrie's fourth. Yes. Porzingis is fifth. Yes. Is there anybody on the? Off. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is there anybody on the Dallas side? That's better than Drew Holiday or Derek White. I don't think so. Right? Like uh, Derek, Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford, they're not better than both Drew Holiday and Derek White. And I would sometimes argue these like, guys pop off, but no, you're right. They aren't. So that means that four out of the top six players in the series are on the Boston side. And then, like, who would you put after that? Like, would you even put. Derek Lively or Dan Gafford over Al Horford at this point? Is P.J. Washington ahead of those guys? Maybe, yeah, P.J. Washington. But they're, it's but not, anyways, yeah, yeah. It drops off a cliff. I, I would just say, yeah, it's four, you know, four of the best players in the series are on the Celtics of the top, top six or whatever. Like, in the starting lineups, it just seems like there's a, a huge gap. Um, oh, yeah. A couple of different stats I'm going to hit you with. Last night was the, was the third largest margin of victory in 30 years, believe it or not. Um, the 18, Got a little close in the end. But like they ended up winning quarter. by 18. Lakers won by 25 in 2009. Warriors won by 22 in 2017. Um, they won by 18. Seven players on the Celtics made at least two three-pointers in game one, which is wild. So everybody That's in their starting lineup, as well as... Um, so everybody in their starting lineup... Tatum hit three. Horford Chris Stapps and Hauser. Yeah, Chris Stapps and Hauser. Yeah, which is that's wild. Yeah, like that sort of stat is insane, man. You have seven players hitting multiple three pointers. Like you're not losing that game. Remember the season when the Raptors had like one guy hitting multiple three pointers constantly, and that's yeah. it. And that's seven it. guys. That is that's a deep team. That is depth. Championship seven guys. Depth. I don't know the way the Dallas has to come back from this is. I think they have to change up how they use Luca, they can't allow him to bring up the ball the entire game being hounded by people. He needs to come off a couple of screens into pick and roll actions. And then they need to try to figure out this lob threat again. And that's, I think that's the only way they have a chance of beating this team. And then, Oh, one little thing that I've noticed about the Celtics over the last little while is that Jason Tatum. And, and maybe this is just like, Maybe this is just me noticing this. I'm not sure if this is actually a thing. Somebody should look into this. But I don't think he plays well when the Celtics are tied or they're down. I think he only plays well and hits buckets when they're up. He does have the reputation of not being a clutch player. Yeah, he kind of drops off a cliff. If they're down, like it's not, he's not getting the team back into the mix. I feel like he's just he kind of drops off a cliff. Anyways, okay, let's move on. What are what is your Prediction for the series. Who do you think is winning this championship? I we're probably before we move on. I must tell you how well it, it has to do with my prediction. I'm just sad about this NBA Finals. I think it's a complete dud. I think it's the second year in a row where it's just a mismatch. Uh, it's the biggest time of the year in basketball, and we're getting blowouts. Uh, last year, Nuggets Heat shit series it was a mismatch the whole way this year the same thing uh celtics and five i'm luca might steal a game at home and yeah that's it celtics and five what is your prediction man i would love i would love for luca to win a championship but i just don't think this is the season that he's gonna do it i don't think he is i think it's gonna be celtics and six um he could just go off for a few games and just sneak out a bunch of wins like do i think it's impossible for the mavericks to win the championship no but i think like if poor zingas is playing it's going to be really tough for them to beat boston so i think celtics in six in six so you think it's not as much of a blow series as i do i don't no i don't i think he's going to figure some stuff out um, do you trust jason kidd to make the adjustments i personally think He's an overrated coach. I hate when they just throw good point guards and say they're going to be coaches. I don't necessarily trust them. I think he's made some adjustments this season, even against you know a couple of a couple of these Western Conference teams. That, um, yeah, I think he's done a good job. So I think he could make some adjustments. I just don't think the team is good enough 
overall to, to beat them, you know, unfortunately. Uh, before we go, shout out to Pascal Siakam. His game one moment in NBA Finals 2019, the man was lights out. Don't forget about him. Don't forget about Pascal. That's our boy. Thanks for watching, everybody.